an active member of New Life Ministries for the past eight years. This evening, I am bringing revival to the attention of not only my generation, but to all those who will listen with an open heart and open mind. For a little over a month, my youth pastor, Tommy Sievers, has been instilling in our spirits the information about revival. <clears throat> Now, many teens, not only in my church, but all over the district, dread those times when Brother Tommy gets a hold of a microphone. <laughs> but when he begins to speak those words of revival, something in my spirit leaps. To understand revival, one must know what it means and what it stands for. Revival, an awakening in the church or community. The revival of old customs. Time after time, it's brought to our attention that we must go back to the old customs of prayer and seek God's face. Let's break this down. To seek, to go in search of. Prayer, to offer, to enter spiritual communion with God. I do believe it's time to seek God's face and to offer ourselves to him. <clears throat> Matthew 6.33 Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Before revival can break out, one must repent of all of their sins. <clears throat> one must fast, and one must seek God's face. To repent, to turn away from sin, to have remorse for past conduct. Again, I say, to turn away from sin. Not to repent just to return to the same lifestyle, but to turn away completely. February is the month of fasting for all of us at New Life. And before we begin to fast, Pastor Amika asked us to envision that which we were fasting for. I simply envisioned a true revival. A true revival like the one that's explained in the coming revival by Bill Bright as a sovereign act of God, a divine visitation of the Lord. Revival is a time for personal humiliation, forgiveness, and restoration. Matthew 5, 6 states, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled in me. During revival, preaching is fearless. That means that if revival was going on right now, I can stand up here with no fear at all and tell you what God has to say. Acts 4.31, they spoke the word filled with God, with boldness. Revival changes communities and nations. That's nations. All over this country, we can have people come into the glory of God. Mark 8.34 states, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Before we can change nations, we must ask what we can do to change the congregation. It's time to, for the congregation who des desires revival to take up our crosses and follow the Lord, completely denying ourselves, completely denying the world. Teens, this means we must deny our iPods, our cell phones, our boyfriends, our girlfriends, the computer, the phone, everything. We must pick up our crosses, step up, and stop having the adults fight our battles for us. Amen. It's time for revival. Amen. A bold text in Bill Bright's writing states, During revival, the presence of the Holy Spirit is powerful. But in my heart, I believe the Holy Spirit should be powerful at all times. Before revival, the Holy Spirit will show us truth and open our eyes to our true conditions and lead us to repent of all of our sins and come back to the first love, Jesus Christ. So again, I say to you, through true repentance comes true revival. <clears throat> 